Hi everybody, my name is Sarah Lean and I'm a cloud advocate at Microsoft. Recently at one of the community sessions that I attended, I was asked if we could use Azure Migrate to migrate virtual machines that were hosted in AWS into Azure. And the answer is yes. So let's have a look at how we can actually use Azure Migrate server migration tool to move your virtual machines from AWS into Azure. So here we are in the Azure portal and we're in the Azure Migrate blade. Now, what we want to do here is actually use the server migrate tool. So if we scroll down, we click on discover and the wizard starts up and asks us a few questions about the virtual machines or the servers that we're looking to migrate. Now, in this case, our servers are located in AWS. So we want to pick that drop down box that says non-virtualized or other. Um, then we have to pick the target region that we want to move our VMs into and in this case we're going to use the UK South Azure region to move our virtual machines into and we click the visit we finish off clicking on the wizard and um, it will start to configure the tool and configure the settings for us so that we can move our AWS virtual machines ultimately into the UK South Azure data center. Now that the tooling is set up, we want to start to actually install that replication appliance. And that's a server that will help us migrate our VMs from AWS into Azure. So we have to download the replication appliance installer file. And we take that and we put it on a server in AWS. Now the installation process can take a wee while. Um, in my case, it actually took about 15 minutes to install the software um, on the server that within AWS. So it acts as that conduit, that middle piece of the puzzle to bring their servers from AWS across to Azure. Once the installation of the software is complete on that replication appliance, we have to go back into the Azure portal and we want to finalize the registration of that replication appliance. Now, what that really does is configure and secure the connection between the Azure portal or the Azure data centers and that replication appliance, just so that everything is tied and everything is linked and everything is encrypted when we're moving it. Now that everything is set up, the next stage is to actually install an agent on the servers that we're migrating. Now you can do this um, manually, so you can do it in the way that I'm going to show you, or you can look at scripting it and deploying it out if you're looking at m migrating a, th a few thousand machines across from AWS. In my use case, I'm only migrating two servers, so I can afford to actually go through the manual process of installing the software manually. So. What we have to do is download the software um, and that's called the Mobility Service Installer. And I'll post details of where you can get these tools. Now we have to extract that and install it on our server and put in some credentials around linking that agent, the agent that's going on the server, with that replication appliance that we've got. And again, there's much more detailed documentation on the actual process and the steps, and I'll post that below as well so that you can reference them later on. Once that agent is installed on our servers, what we'll see within your Azure portal is discovered servers. So for every server that you've installed on an agent on, you'll get to see a discovered server. And again, we're only migrating two servers in this use case. So we'll see two servers within our Azure portal. Now, the next step is to start to replicate those virtual machines from AWS into Azure. So within the Azure Migrate Blade, we click on that replicate button. Now, the first step within that wizard is to actually tell the tool what virtual machines we're going to replicate. Again, in this case, the two servers that we've discovered, we want to replicate. So that's AWS Server 01 and AWS Server 02. We want to migrate them. So the second part of this wizard is our target settings. And that's where we want to put these virtual machines when they're replicated within to Azure. So that is the resource group, the subscription, the virtual network, and the subnet that you want to migrate these virtual machines into. Now you have to preset up all of that. You can't do it as part of the wizard, but hopefully as part of your migration plan, as your migration project, you already have these um, resources set up within Azure. You already have that landing zone for your servers to um, land into. 
Now, the next step of this process is to tell the tool what size of Azure Virtual Machine you want to set up. Now, you can use um, the existing settings, so you can migrate the servers in the same size that you currently have them, um, or you can specify a size that you want them. In this case, we know that the size that we currently are running these servers in AWS is not appropriate for the workload. So when we move them into Azure, we're actually going to use bigger virtual machines. So we specify these sizes within the tool and then it can help us resize it when we migrate it as well. Now the last stage in this wizard that you have to configure is around the disks and you can identify what disks you're actually moving and replicating. If you had multiple disks attached to these VMs and you didn't want to take all of the disks you can select that or you can change or make sure that the right um, disk is selected for your operating system disk. In this case, we just have the primary disk attached to these virtual machines, so there's really no configuration for us to do, but there is that customization available if you wanted to do it. Now that you've configured all the settings, what you have to do is start that replication and kick that off. Kick off that copy or that replication from AWS into Azure. Now the replication stage can take a while. Um, in my use case, I think it took about 30 or 40 minutes to actually replicate across from AWS into Azure. Um, depending on the size of your virtual machines, the potential, the, the internet connection between the two um, cloud platforms, it could take a while or it could even be quicker. Within the Azure Migrate Blade, we do have the ability to check how that replication is going, to check the, the progress and understand where it's going and how long it's been taken. So you can monitor it and understand what stage it's at and how potentially long you have to wait. Once the servers have actually been replicated across and all the configuration data is within the Azure Migrate portal, you can actually reconfigure it. So if you wanted to change the size of the virtual machine that it would spin up in Azure as, you can do that. Um, or you can change some of the configuration around all of that again. If things change during the migration project, you can actually start to configure that again. But you can only do that once the server is actually replicated within um, Azure. Now that we have the servers and a replication of them within the Azure portal, we want to do a test migration. So we want to test what the process looks like and we want to confirm that the virtual machines have actually been brought across in a state that's usable um, for us to bring them across. Um, and we can do that using the test migration stage. Now what this does is allow us to actually spin up those virtual machines and, and in interact with them. So we can RDP into them, we can connect into them, we can um, check the services, we can check the data that's been copied, we can make sure all the data that we wanted have been, has been taken across and that that replication process has actually been successful and brought us a live and working virtual machine. Now when you spin up these virtual machines under this test migration stage, what you'll see is the servers have um, a dash test um, appended to the name and that just means that they're not production workloads, they're a test scenario and they're isolated from your production workload um, and they're separate so you can interact with that server while having the original server still running in your environment. And that gives you that test platform to check that the replication has been okay and understand any processes that you might have to undertake when you bring that machine across to Azure, such as installing some software or even uninstalling some software that originally lived on the AWS platform. So once you've done that test migration and you're happy with everything, what you want to do is make sure you clean up those resources because the last thing that you want to do is be paying for resources within Azure that you're not using. And also having those servers in your environment could cause a bit of confusion even though they have that dash, dash test name appended. So now that we've got the replication done and the test migration has went okay and we've cleaned up all of those resources and we've had approval to actually do the live migration, what we want to do is kick off that live migration um, and that will actually bring across bring our replication data live into our environment. Um, you can turn off the server that you had in AWS and run the one in Azure and everything should be migrated across and runnable within your Azure environment instead of AWS. There's nothing different about the server once it's been migrated across. It acts just like any other server within um, Azure. You can change the size, you can enable Azure Backup, you can enable um, site recovery, you can um, install custom extensions, all of that functionality is still there even though the VM originally started its life within AWS. 
Thank you for tuning in and hopefully this was useful in helping you understand how Azure Migrate can take your virtual machines from AWS or another cloud provider and bring it across into Azure.